Hello, men's, fems, thems, and toasters. It is Ultimate here. You've seen the title, so you know exactly why we're here today. A few days ago, I posted a poll that gave you four options of possible videos to pick from. The results were close, but the leading result at the time of me writing this script was this video at 38%, so here we are. This is your obligatory warning that this video will probably have spoilers for books 1 to 15 of Wings of Fire. Also, this should be obvious, but I'm pretty sure there are over a hundred characters at this point, so I'm not going to be ranking them all. I'm just doing the 15 POVs of the main series. Okay, I'll stop stalling and start making people mad. Coming in at dead last, we have the grass butterfly known as Luna. In general, this list has no characters that I really dislike. It's more of a ranking video of which characters I like more than the others. Luna here is the exception. Luna spends half of her book complaining about the people she's traveling with because they're not as good as her boyfriend. The moral of Luna's story is essentially to accept dragons who are different, which is literally the point of the book before it. The only relatable thing that I noticed is that she tends to hide how she's feeling for the benefit of others, which is me to a T, but it's not enough to get her out of the number 15 pit. Taking the crown of spot number 14, the illustrious Queen Snowfall. I didn't dislike book 14 nearly as much as everyone else did, but I was pretty much on the same boat as everyone when it came to the main character. Along with her interesting decisions throughout the book, I just find the constant issue of accepting dragons that are different from you pretty tiring. Like, that seems to be a large point of the series, and essentially in arc 2 it plays out with Jade Mountain Academy already. I'm not sure this is a lesson we need to keep learning, but no, we have to make sure Snowfall puts up pride flags in the Ice Palace so she can further the plot. I need to shorten these because this script is getting long. In the very first book, Clay's this cute little cinnamon roll who will do anything to help his friends. In every other book after that, he is a dumb muddy guy who will do anything for food. I was never into this character butchering, and it made him seem like just a nicer version of every other Mudwing instead of his own character. Also, I do not ship him with peril, no I will not elaborate. Blue is low on the list because his refusal to stand up for himself infuriates me. Partially because I am the same way, but never mind that, we're not talking about me, we're talking about Blueberry. Wait, I already made that joke before. We're talking about Blueberry... Juice? Perfect. Anyhow, I know he got better at that later on in the book, but it frustrates me to think about how much more could have happened if he wasn't being a doormat to every bee dragon he came across. And then he gets fucking infected with angry weeds and we don't see him again until the end of the series. Oh god, Cricket. I know people like Cricket. I do not like Cricket. I would like nothing more than to reach through the pages and use my fingers to press her mouth closed so that she stops asking the most infuriating, unhelpful questions at the worst times. Like, I get it, you're adorably curious, now please go away into the number 11 spot where you belong. Go re read a book or something. I really liked Winter in his own book. I did not like the way he treated other dragons, or the love triangle he's involved in. Normally I'm a fan of the Zuko-like characters that have a rough exterior but are soft on the inside and just don't know how to show it, but to be completely honest, this is one of the characters the Phantom ruined for me. After seeing so many people defend his shitty actions and argue who the Sparkle Night Dragon should have chosen as her date, he just gives me weird vibes. At least he was able to move on after not being chosen, despite many of his fans furiously writing fanfiction where he lives happily ever after with a dragon he's not compatible with. Turtle is a character I feel basically nothing about. He's higher on the list because I don't necessarily have any problems with him, but he's only at number 9 because he's basically a muted version of Blue, just with magic powers that he refuses to use. I tried to give him a little more slack because his book is the second to last in an arc, which is usually more plot related and has less characterization. Plus he's actually nice to people, as opposed to someone else on this list. Tsunami, who is yet another royal dragon, is using her royal fist to punch a royal hole in your wall if you so much as suggest she is not the best headmaster ever to live. 
I'm not a fan of her inconsistent character, since she apparently learns a lesson to not want to murder people in her own book and then changes her mind later on, but she's high on the list because I can't resist the characters who decide that violence is not the answer. It's a question, and the answer is yes. Sunny has a sunny, optimistic personality, which is the surprise of the century. I wasn't really interested in her in the first few books, but during her POV, the way everyone kind of talked over and babied her really resonated with me. Considering in my youth, I also have a long history of people not really listening to me and just assuming I had nothing worthwhile to add to the conversation. I like that she's got some spice and is willing to go really far for her own morals. I think that's pretty admirable, plus she declines Starflight's marriage proposal with Grace. You go, girl. Find someone better than him. What's... what's that? He... He's higher on the list? Oh. Oops. My favorite gay danger leaf is number six on the list. I'm so proud. I mentioned earlier that the rough exterior, soft center, tootsie roll, lollipop type character is something I'm usually into. Winter's personality and the love triangle there kind of ruined it. In my opinion, Sundu is an upgraded version of this. Partially because she has a loving, adorable girlfriend, so there's no petty drama besides the shit with her mom. As a side note, I think I would have liked Winter a lot more if we could have seen his personality and backstory without the overlay of Moon's Rose ceremony later on in the books. Yay, we defeated Darkstalker, but now for the real important thing. Who's the nervous, powerful teenager gonna date? And speaking of a nervous, powerful teenager, it's probably going to make some people mad that Moonwatcher is number five. And I get it, she's a Mary Sue, she's too perfect, whatever other essays you want to make about her. I really liked Moon Rising. I thought it was well written and well paced, and it's one of the reasons that Arc 2 is my favorite, because it felt like it had a really good setup. Despite that idiotic love triangle, Moon is relatable and mostly consistent, at least in her own book. I'm not a fan of how she kind of just stopped being shy at the end of the book, since that's not only not very realistic, but also not very necessary. But I still think she's better than people give her credit for. It may anger even more of you to know that Glory is number four. She was my favorite character when reading the first arc, and my opinions of her haven't changed much. She's a little spicy, she's tough and responsible when she needs to be, and literally helped organize an army to take over and rescue an entire tribe from an erupting volcano. I think that's pretty neat, despite her relationship with Deathbringer, which we will not get into today. The Dark Secret is a fairly boring book, and mostly involves dragons flying from place to place while the main character shits himself worrying about a gold dragon that doesn't return his romantic feelings. But while the book may not be that good, I'm rather fond of Starflight. I think he's cute and he's very anxious in a way that usually doesn't come across as obnoxious. Still mad that the dragon who loves books the most has to be the one who gets blinded, but you know, I'm not salty at all. Don't touch my little nighttime book boy. I have heard some people say that Kibley's intense need to be liked and constant jokes are annoying. I agree. And I don't care. I thought it was really interesting that we finally got a character who's really smart. Not book smart like Starflight, but street smart and able to figure out stuff really quickly. It's very helpful for the plot, and I'm sure that's the main reason for it, but it was just kind of refreshing to me. He's charming and quick-witted, and is genuinely nice to other people instead of yelling at them until they feel sorry for him like Winter does. If you know me personally, or for some reason you've been keeping track and used the process of elimination on this list, you know exactly who is on the top spot. My girl, Peril. I love weird and socially awkward characters. The fact that she doesn't know how to interact with basically anyone is very relatable to me. I love her powers. Almost everything she says in confusion or anger is hilarious. And I like the small representation here, where you learn to move away from an abusive parent. Her friendship with Turtle is adorable, and I honestly wouldn't mind another winglet where they travel the world or something and figure things out. I have done it. I have ranked all of the POVs. I have annoyed at least one person by saying I like something they hate, or vice versa. My life is complete. I can finally 
rest. Wait, there's there's three more videos I said I would do? Three? Fuck. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like or subscribe or whatever it is I'm supposed to say. If my choice has infuriated you, feel free to leave a comment telling me how much I suck, which I will promptly ignore. If you'd like some more Wings of Fire content, click the playlist on the magical end card which will be popping up very soon, or join the Discord to suggest more. Ultimate out. I have been informed that Luna did actually mention wanting to be a weaver in Book 11, so I hereby retract all of my statements and will henceforth be replacing it with this card and leaving no context.